Hi everyone, welcome to Nursing with CG. In this video, I'm going to talk about the easiest way of doing physical examination. Physical examination is a great challenge for all the beginning nursing students. Let's make it very easy. Whenever you do physical examination, you normally follow four different steps. The first one is inspection, second one is palpation, the third one is percussion, and the fourth one is auscultation. And normally we follow this steps in this order, except abdomen. Whenever you do physical examination on the abdomen, you follow the steps in this particular order. Look, listen and feel. Look, inspection, listen. Auscultation and palpation, then followed by you can do percussion. Why we are doing in this particular order in the examination of abdomen? Because when you do palpate before you listen, that can alter the bowel sound. That's why we have to be very strict about following this particular steps whenever you do physical examination on abdomen. Now you are ready for the physical examination. The first thing you are going to go to a patient's room and you are going to introduce yourself. The second step you are going to wash your hands and you can apply the hand sanitizer and just let it dry. Then you apply the gloves and you are going to walk to the patient's bedside. And the third step you are going to check the room for just having an eyeball assessment. Make sure that the patient is safe. Patient is not on the floor, patient is not having any type of you know risk for safety and you are making sure that patient is not choking, patient is not having any respiratory distress. You are just making sure that patient is safe. Then you can go and check the ID band and you are identifying the patient with two universally accepted identifiers. The first is you are going to ask the name of the patient. The second is you are asking the date of birth. You are going to match with the ID band. Make sure that that is the correct patient. Next, you are going to check the level of consciousness. You are going to check the orientation to place, person and time. You are going to ask the patient, where are you right now? You are going to ask, which year is this? What is the time now? So all these questions give you an idea that whether this patient are big alert oriented. May I come in? Yes, please. Hi, my name is CG. I'll be a nurse today. How are you? I'm doing good. Let me check your armband. What's your name? John. What's the date of birth? 10 10 8. All right, very good. Do you know where are you right now? The hospital. How old are you? 12. All right, very good, John. When you do the physical examination of the head, you're going to do inspection and palpation of the head. You're going to check, is there any lumps, moles, lacerations, pediculosis, tenderness, or any old scar of any surgery. Then you're going to check hair distribution, color, texture, lesions, and hair loss. The term for hair loss is alopecia. So any patients who have chemotherapy, cancer patients, those patients have chance for having alopecia. I'm going to do a physical examination on you. I'm going to check your head to toe. Is that okay with you, John? Yes. All right. Do you want to sit or you want to be on the bed? Uh, I'd like to sit, please. All right, that's great. Can you come a little bit more? Okay, sit. All right. Okay. So let me check your head, okay? Very good. Perfect. I don't see any problem here. All right. Next, we are going to talk about the assessment of cranial nerves. In human body, there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. When you do the physical examination, you are going to check whether all these cranial nerves are intact. Stroke patients, paralyzed patients, brain trauma patients, motor vehicle accident, 
patients, all those different patients can have a lot of abnormalities and their chance for having impairment with the normal functioning of all those cranial nerves. So easiest way of memorizing this cranial nerves, we can use a mnemonic OOO to take a family vacation, go Vegas after hour. So it starts from olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibular cochlea, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory and hypoglossal. Normally we represent cranial nerves with Roman letters like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. the nose you're going to check the functioning of cranial nerve number one the name is olfactory you're going to check the smell you're going to check breathing difficulty deviated septum surgery fracture polyps drainage you can use your pen light and you can observe all these things and you can interpret your findings hey John let me check your nose now okay all right okay I don't see any deviated septum no sign of any polyp or any infection now hey John I'm going to test your smell I'm going to give you something to smell and let me know what it is okay. all right I want you to close your eyes and close your nail all right what is that uh, it smells like mint. Very good. I want you to do with the opposite near. What is that? Uh, coffee. Very good. So cranial nerve number one olfactory is intact. Can you assess the eyes? You're going to look at the sclera. Normally sclera looks white. Whenever there is an infection, especially conjunctivitis, that can make the sclera in pink color. Normally when you assess the eyes, you are going to check three important cranial nerves. Cranial nerve number two, three and six. Number two is optic, number three is oculomotor, number six is obtusense. Optic nerve, you are going to check the visual acuity by asking the patient whether are you using glasses? Are you farsighted? Are you nearsighted? How you assess this? You are going to ask your patient, read my badge. Or you're going to show something, a sign on the room and ask the patient to read it. Or you can show the menu and ask the patient to read. Then you're going to assess the third ocular motor, that is the third cranial nerve. You're going to check PERLA. What is PERLA? PERLA stands for pupil equal round and react to light and accommodation. Flash the light on the patient's eye from side. You're, from the side you are bringing to the eyes. Normally, the pupil dilatation 2 to 4 millimeter, that's normal. But some cases, patients having any brain injury, brain damage, any type of neurological impairment, stroke, those patients having some abnormalities in pupil reaction. Normally, we expect both pupil react equal, round to the light. But sometimes all these problems can lead to unequal reaction of the pupil. Normally we document like brisk or normal or sluggish. So these are the findings normally we document in the patient's record. So six, that is abducense, we are going to check the lateral movement of the eye. You are asking the patient to follow an object. It can show a pen 10 to 15 inches away from the patient and ask the patient to follow the direction, the right and left movement that indicates normal function of abducens. Hi John, do you wear any glasses or contacts? No, I'm not. Okay, very good. Can you read this for me? Uh, computer. All right. Can you read that on that board? Uh, no exit. All right, very good. Cranial nerve number two, optic nerve is intact. I'm going to check your eyes, okay? All right, I'm going to flash light on your eyes. Just 
stay there. All right, very good. Your pupils are equal, round, reactive to light and accommodation. So cranial nerve number three, ocular motor is intact. In addition to all other eye examinations, you are going to do some more uh, assessment on eyes. The first thing is consensual reflex. Consensual reflex, that means when you um, flash the light on the patient face from the side, you expect that even though you are showing from one side, you expect the constriction of pupil bilaterally. Next is accommodation. Just like when you focus a closer object and a, long, a far object with your camera, the same thing, accommodation. When you ask the patient to look something at far, you can see pupil are dilated. And when you ask something, when you bring that object closer, you can see the pupil are constricting. So that means the pupil can accommodate. The next is convergence. Convergence, when you bring something, so when you point at something or bringing something closer to the nose, you can see like a squint, you can see the cross eye. That is called convergence. Normally in the eyeball movement, there are six pairs of muscles are involved. And we are going to check six cardinal fields. You are going to show an object to the patient and ask the patient to follow the direction. You're going to show six cardinal fields. One, two, three, four, five, six. So normally, patient will follow. Hi, John. I'm going to check your accommodation. Can you read it for me again? Um, computer. All right. So you can read the far side, right? Uh, no, I can't. I'm going to check the convergence. Just look at me, all right, and and face this. Focus on this finger, all right. Yeah, very good. Okay, all right, John. I'm going to check your eyeball movement. Okay, mm -hmm. so just follow this pen. One, two, three. Very good. One, two, three. Let me check your face. You have any pain here? Uh, no. All right. Okay. Uh, let me check here. Do you have any pain here? No. No? All right. So cranial nerve number five, trigeminal is intact. Um, all right, John, can you smile for me? Puff your cheek. All right. Can you raise the eyebrow down? Close your eyes tightly. Okay, good, very good. So cranial nerve number seven, facial is intact. Next, you're going to assess the ear. The first step, you're going to ask the patient whether this patient has any difficulty in hearing. Also, you're going to ask the patient, are you using any hearing aid? The next step is inspection. You're going to check the symmetry bilaterally the ear pinna, and also you're going to look for excessive cerumen, that is ear wax, and also checking drainage or bleeding. Sometimes when the patient has any motor vehicle accident, they come with drainage of cere cerebrospinal fluid through the ear. Also, you can see sometimes bleeding through the ear or any other type of drainage when there is an infection in the middle ear. The next step is palpation. You palpate the back of the ear for tenderness. That indicates there is infection, middle ear infection. The next thing you are going to check the cranial nerve number 8 that is acoustic. You check the acoustic nerve function by a test known as whisper test. What you are going to do, you are going to whisper behind the patient by closing one of the ears and you are going to say one word and ask the patient what was that. The same thing you are going to repeat on the opposite side and if the patient is able to identify both words that is that indicates that patient's ear functioning is intact. Cranial nerve 8 is intact. All right John, do you have any hearing problem? No. Do you use any hearing aids? Mm -mm. All right, let me check your ear, okay? So whenever you do the pediatrics, you pull the ear pinnate down and back. Okay, 
Do you have any pain here? No, no? All right. I'm going to do a wrist for test on you. I'm going to, can you please close your ear? This ear? And I'm going to say something and you let me know. Uh, blueberry. Very good. I'm going to do with the other ear. Okay. Oh, I'm going to ask the screen of number 9 is glossopharyngeal, 10 vagus and 12 hypoglossal. 9 glossopharyngeal, you're going to ask the patient to swallow or ask the patient to say ah, then you check the ula and you are going to assess inside the mouth. If the patient has any problem, the patient won't be able to swallow properly. The next one is cranial nerve number 10 vagus. You're asking the patient to speak or swallow or cough. When the patient speak, if the patient has any problem, there will be hoarseness of speech. That indicates there is impairment of vagus nerve. Cranial nerve number 12, hypoglossal. You ask the patient to stick the tongue out and you are assessing the tongue movement. If the patient has any problem, the patient won't be able to do that any paralysis, any stroke, neurological impairment or oral problems, the patient won't be able to do that. So make sure that your patient's cranial nerve number 9, 10, 12 are intact. Document your findings in the patient's record. Now I'm going to check cranial nerve 9, 10 and 11. All right, John, can you open your mouth? Okay, say ah, uh, ah, uh, all right, very good. Can you swallow? Uh -huh. Very good. Can you cough? <coughs> uh -huh. Very good. All right, cranial nerve number nine, uh, 10 are intact. Can you stick the tongue out? Move to the right and left. Can you protrude the tongue against your cheek? The other side. Very good. Cranial nerve number 11, hypoglossal, is intact. Next, you're going to assess cranial nerve number 11, spinal accessory. Inspect skin and palpate the shoulder. If there is any pain or decreased movement in the shoulders, then you're going to assess the strength of trapezius and stenomastoid muscle on the shoulder. Place your hands on the top of the patient's shoulder and ask the patient to shrug against and you can assess the strength of the sternomastoid and trapezius muscle. And also you are going to ask the patient to push against your hand. That also indicates the strength of the spinal accessory. Shrug your shoulder. All right, very good. Can I check your hand? Okay, press against my hand. Okay, good. Here. All right, very good. Cranial nerve number 11, spinal accessory is intact. Next, you are going to assess the range of motion, flexion, extension, hyperextension, and rotation. Flexion, extension, hyperextension, right flexion, left flexion, right rotation, left rotation.